I'll say what I said in the comments. Sometimes you got to turn your brain off and enjoy a movie. Bloodshot, uh, I'll be honest, I'm a big comic book uh, guy as I am. Valiant Universe is one, and me and Mark, me and Mark both saw it. We're obviously, I'm obviously doing this solo, but it was just too late at night to do a review. Um, and I'm paying for it this, uh, this today. Uh, like, I barely got any sleep. My body's feeling it. Um, but, um, so, uh, yeah, I mean, we both looked up, like, Valiant Column characters. Like, besides Bloodshot, who I was vaguely aware of. Like, a couple names out. Solar, Son of the Atom, or... Uh, or I think it's like Son of the Atom or something like that. Um, Man of War, I know that. But um, yeah, no, so this is this is the Bloodshot character, who is essentially kind of a a Deadpool esque character, but if you add like nanites. And look, I, I don't know how long this review is going to be. I'm I, I'm like I said, I'm feeling it from last night. I had to get up for work earlier than. Uh, and then the time I got to bed allowed me to get pro sleep for. Um, and that's the thing. I, uh, I'm i having some heart palpitations right now. Uh, like, throughout the day. I th I'm pretty sure I'm fine. I don't have the corona. Which we will actually talk about the corona on uh, box office. Because now it looks like it's going to be playing a big factor in hurting the theaters. Like, now now it's real for the theaters. First world problems not us there. But I will talk about more, that more on that. But no, it's because I just... I'm 30. My body doesn't handle shit like it used to. And only getting maybe four hours of sleep. Where, and with the amount of work I have uh, I have to do at work, it's harsh on my body right now. And I'm, I'm kind of suffering it right now. Um, but no, I, I'm, I'm pretty certain I don't have the corona. <laughs> if, I, if I for one second thought I had the corona, I, I'd call out of work and I basically just wouldn't leave the house for a little while. Um, but... Um, yeah, anyway, I digress. So, it, uh, Bloodshot, it is exactly, it is not a complicated movie. Uh, it, it's pretty simple in its plot. Guy, guy's a soldier, a guy dies, Vin Diesel, uh, dies, uh, they're able to bring him back, they explain to him, hey, you know, this is what, ha what we did, you're super enhanced now, This the guy finds out that guy killed my wife, turns out they've been using him. So, yeah, uh, that's, that's the movie, but for what they do, it's simple, but it's fun. Uh, Vin Diesel's, hey, Vin Diesel's one of those guys who does, Mark and I kind of put, uh, uh, front of, uh, after the show, he does angry really well. This isn't one of his best, it's one of his better movies, I'd say. Um, and he's, cause he's done some crap, let's be honest. Uh, and I love Vin Diesel, but he's done some crap, but it's, it's, um, he does, it does pissed off and angry really well. He also has... When he's trying to do emotion, like, oh, I'm so hurt. Yeah, he looks, he looks almost like a puppy that got kicked. It's like, he looks like a kicked puppy. <laughs> uh, and, and like, you do feel a little sorry for him. Not that he's like, not that he's like, uh, he's just, oh, Oscar worthy. But it's like, you, you kind of feel, when he's uh, like sad or hurt or confused, you kind of see it on his face pretty well. The action sequences range from a little shaky to pretty fun. Uh, the one that you see in the trailer where he's fighting on the, uh, elevator, like, down the elevator shaft. Uh, that's probably where the CG does stand out a little bit, but it's nothing that's, that would, uh, really... It's not terrible or anything, it's just, it's a little rubbery, but at the same time, you know what? It's, like, you're, you're paying attention, you're invested, uh, and that's the thing, is like, you like, you were invested in the character you have, your hero is someone who's likable enough that you can get behind, um, at the same time, you know, he's got his faults. The characters we all have here, uh, like the KT, who is a soldier who is, has a breathing apparatus, you know, she's likable. Ja, Guy Pierce is a very enjoyable villain. He's not like a, here's the thing, this is weird to say, he's not like evil, but he's a bad guy doing bad things. But at the same time, it's like he's got some level of a conscience, but it's next to none. Like he'll shut off her ability to breathe just to prove a point, and then he was prepared to kill her, but she found a way around that. So it's clear that he he um he's still he's not a good guy. But in terms of like the most evil guys I've ever seen on screen, hardly hardly that. Like the other guys who are enhanced, guy who can basically see everything. He's visually enhanced by uh, uh, optic nerve, optic eyes. The guy who's got enhanced legs. Um, the the coder, the coder uh, played by. Give me one second. I want to get the uh, playlist up here. 
Uh, by the way, if anyone's wondering about my health right now, it's like I'm talking and then being active is actually helping a little bit. Uh, so now that said, uh, I, I know for a fact one thing I need is a good night's sleep. Uh, so let's see here now. The character's name was Wilfred Wiggins, played by uh, Lamorne Morris. Uh, he is by far the best character in the film. He is hilarious. It, like You just have fun with this guy. Um, and Because uh, he's kind, he's kind of sprouting one line. I don't know. Maybe it's his accent. Like he's got like this... Ha you know what he sounds like? He sounds like Don... And maybe this is his actual accent. He's like Don Cheadle from the Ocean movies. That's what he sounds like. That, that uh, Cockney Brit accent. Um, so... Uh, <laughs> Uh, so, and because of that, all of this may be like, uh, and I don't know, maybe it's just because the accent I find is, uh, first off, it's a fun accent, and when he's, like, being serious, he can be serious, and, like, it works, but at the same time, he's just got a fun personality, like, you know, oh, 20 quid, he says, oh, Jesus, and there's no one there, I need real friends, um, so, um, yeah, oh, yeah, I, uh, yeah, Toby Cabell is, as a brief, sh you see Toby Cabell in the trailer, uh, he's one of the targets, should note that, you know, you get it from the trailer, so it's not a big deal. They were using Vin Diesel to eliminate targets. He's one of the targets, but when we first see him, it's played off like he's the villain. Uh, and, he, but he, and he goes into an ice, like a um, uh, meat locker uh, where Vin Diesel's being held. And he just says, Psycho Killer! Uh, 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 just dancing. It's, <laughs> it's like, that kind of sets up the tone of what you're getting a little bit. It's, it's going to be a, it's gonna be a fun time. It's a fun time. It absolutely is. Um, like, they do, I will say this, they, pr not, there's nothing overly surprising in the movie, because anything you really see in the trailer is somehow, some way, the, it, part of the movie, obviously, but in more a sense of what you see for the plot. Uh, so, like, knowing that he's been being used by these guys, we know that. They, they say, they say that for the trailer, it's in the trailer. Um, but also, like, when he meets his wife again, because it's revealed that his wife isn't dead, me and Mark were sitting there like, oh, it's going to get awkward. And I and I immediately know from the way she reacts, seeing him like, she didn't know he was dead. She didn't know this, that. And then they say how long he's been gone, and it just two and two uh, clicks together. But they make, they see, when we first see the whole process of him waking up, um, uh, waking up and uh, you know, you know, figuring himself out and then going on revenge, we don't know how, see, they, we've seen this is the first time, but this is, it's clear, it's not the first time this has happened. We don't know how many times prior to this, this has actually gone down. We do see a list of targets at one point on the screen, I can't remember how many, so we know it's been activated at least that many times, but, oh, pardon, we don't know how many times he's gone out and actually gotten his revenge. Um, so... Uh, it, it's, it's an interesting, uh, I like how they set that up and kind of pay it off a bit. Uh, like I said, the action sequences, for the most part, are actually pretty solid. Um, like the stuff they do with the nanites, I, it sucks that this is PG-13. Now, being PG-13 will help it long-term at the box office, but it does suck it's PG-13, because you could tell they wanted to get away with a lot more than what we saw. And we saw, some, like, you see it in trailer 2 where they get his face blown off and then he just starts healing. They saw a little bit in the clip of where he just gets blown apart by a grenade, but he just reforms. I'm like, you can... T There's one scene in the elevator fight where his face is being grinded against the uh, the window, just... But it's it's not by a lot. It's like pretty much a scrape when it's all said and done. So it's... Um, it, it's like they wanted it VR, but they knew it had to be a PG-13, so they did the best they could, making it as gritty as possible. I mean, an easy way around that is to cut the blood out, and... They, this one little thing they'll explain, they explain, a little spoiler, all his blood was replaced by the nanites. Like, literally, all the blood in his vein isn't blood, it's nanites. So, right there, you're replacing all the gore you need, for at least on his part, with nanites and CGI. So, easy fix on that. Ultimately, this, this is a film that I could definitely say, if you want a turn your brain off and have a good time movie at the theaters, uh, you know, I mean, I'd also say Sonic the Hedgehog, do Sonic the Hedgehog, um... But I guess the question also is, uh, is there anything else that I could really... It could, first off, it's, oh, good, I said it's better than Sonic the Hedgehog. Ooh. That's it. Well, Sonic the Hedgehog is a very different movie. It's a very kid-friendly movie as opposed to this, which definitely for, you know, I mean, if you're the kind of parent who does that for your kids, sure. Um, but, 
Mm. See, it, it, tough, really. Uh, I will say I ultimately had more fun in this than Sonic, but this is because it's it's definitely a movie that's more up my alley. Uh, whereas Sonic is um, um, uh, whereas Sonic was definitely a bit more kid friendly. It was still a lot of fun, and I enjoyed myself. But I noticed a bit more of the problems in that movie than I did with uh, with this. And I'm sure if I watched it again or thought on it longer, I'd notice the problems of Bloodshot too. But for what it is, no, I had a good time with this film. Uh, I, if you're interested in this film, if you're a Vin Diesel fan, you'll like it. Uh, if you like just a good, shut your brain off, have a good time movie, uh, action movie at the box office, yeah, or uh, at, the, at the theaters, why well, you can still go to the theaters, because trust me, with all these delays on films, um, I will not be surprised to hear that theaters are closing for uh, delaying or just go closing down for the time being. Like, big chains will ultimately be fine, but I was watching, like, one of my shows uh, earlier talking about this subject. It's like, yeah, like, the mom and pop theaters, they're going to freaking close, and the, the hit this is going to take to the theater industry is going to be major. Because if they end up closing North American box office, no, China's the second biggest box office in the world, and we're seeing the effects on uh, some of those movies. Like, Sonic probably would have done a little bit better in China, uh, or a little better in China. Now, it... All these movies that haven't been released in China that would have been, eventually will be released in China. I'm certain on it. It's just going to take a while. Um, like Mulan, definitely going to, they bumped Mulan because they want Chinese release. Fast and Furious bumped a whole year. So, uh, I mean, we just lost uh, New Mutants, Quiet Place 2, which, I should tell you right now, there's no movie review next week. I have no interest to go see The Hunt. Um, and I'm not sitting through, I still believe. I refuse to, uh, to sit through faith-based films. Unless it's, like, something like Hacksaw Rage, which isn't a faith-based film, based film, but the man's faith was a big part of his character and who he was. That's a different story, and I can deal with that, but faith-based films, because they always paint, it's always painted so black and freaking white in those films. Oh, our ideology is good. Your ideology is bad, particularly in the pure fix flicks films. But again, not going on a rant. I always start to go on a rant about that. Now, for what I understand, I still believe. Actually, let me get the reviews up for I still believe right now. How well is that being reviewed? I know that um, last I checked, Bloodshots doesn't have the best reviews. Uh, but we're just going to leave it there. Till then, thanks for watching. See you later.